gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you.
he honore, he gloria, he hallelujah ki te atua, he maumarongo, he atapai, he manaki ki rungi i te matau te whetua, he hakaaro pai, he hakaaro mui, he hakaaro roa ki ngā tangata katoa, nō reira ki a tau ki a tātou katoa, te atawhai o tō tātou e riki o iu karaiti, me te aroha o te atua, me te whiwhinga tahitanga ki te wairu a tapu, āke, 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 āmi. Hi, everyone. Paul has much to teach us. <clears throat> he, uh, in, in his letter to the Philippians, he ha- is about 30 years removed from his uh, conversion experience on the Damascus Road. And he's writing to this church that was struggling with those who would seek to uh, lead people astray from Christ, sometimes referred to as the Judaizers. Um, and they had kind of Gnostic tendencies. But Beyond that, they looked to Paul, and they knew Paul was the guy who was the one that they were trying to to follow and to emulate as much as they could. And Paul writes to them, and I like what he says in the third chapter, starting in verse 12. He says, not that I've already obtained this. What he's talking about obtaining this is from the verse before. He says that I may obtain the resurrection from the dead. In other words, that he would be sanctified. He's not worried about his salvation and being raised in the end. That's not it. It's how can I become more like Christ? The, and if I can become more like Christ, then I know my resurre- I will have resurrection. That's what he's thinking about. So it's not about being saved at the end of his life or any of, any of that. It's more, how do I live more fully into Christ? That's what he's seeking to obtain. He says, not that I've already obtained this. Now remember, They thought Paul had it all. He was the guy that knew everything. He was the one that they looked up to all the time. He says, I haven't obtained it. He says, or have I reached my goal? He hasn't reached his goal. He said, I press on to make it my own because Christ has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it on my own, but this one thing I do, Forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on towards the goal of the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us then who are mature be of the same mind. And if you think differently about something, then this too God will reveal to you. Only let us hold fast to what we have attained. And he says, brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. What Paul is talking about is how do we grow in our maturity with Christ? And he's saying, I haven't obtained it. And of all people, the people that he, of the churches he started, they would say, Paul is the one who's got it all figured out. And Paul is readily saying, I don't. I'm still striving and pressing on to make Christ my own, he says. And he says, um, I do not consider that I have made it on my own. And here's the catch, I think. But this one thing I do, and this is maybe the point for us, is if we're going to grow in our um, growth in Christ, if we're going to continue to mature in Christ, he says, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on towards the goal of the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Forgetting what lies behind and pressing forward towards what lies ahead. Part of what we do is sometimes we get so kind of stuck that we say, this is in my own life, this is what I want to do. I want to pray more. So I'm just going to work on praying more. And that's all we, we do. And we've, we beat ourselves up when we forget to pray or we said we've pro, we will pray for somebody and we don't. And as a result, a lot of the times we just kind of get stuck and get bogged down. And what Paul is saying is, no, keep pressing on. Keep pushing towards the next thing that will help deepen your relationship with Christ. If you're struggling with prayer, bring in some help to help you in your prayer life. Whether it's a book, whether it's another person, whatever it is. What is the next step for you to continue to grow in your life with Christ? 
See, Christ considers us his beloved. Paul uses that word because that's how he saw his relationship with Christ. That's how we should see our relationship with Christ. Christ desires more than anything else for you to deepen your relationship with him. And so I think our call is to say, what's the next step in my spiritual development that I need to do? And every one of us will have something different. I just use prayer as an example. For others, it may be fighting your tongue. Your tongue gets the best of you. You maybe say things you don't want to. You use words you don't like using. Maybe that's it. Maybe it is reading scripture. You say, I read scripture, I fall asleep. Maybe that's it. What is it in your life? Maybe it is not judging others or loving your enemies or serving those who are downtrodden, who are the poor among us. What is it that's going to be your next step that's going to help you grow? And what Paul is saying is, <clears throat> press on, do what you need to do to grow in that area so that you can increase your maturity in Christ. That's our call today, this week. What is the one thing that you want to focus on in deepening your life with Christ? Take that first step. If you're not sure, maybe talk to somebody that you look up to and say, I'd like to get better at this. Do you have any suggestions for me? Or I see you're really good at that. Would you be willing to help me with that? Because I'd, like I'd like to figure out how to do that in my life more. That's what I invite you to do. Take a step into that. Do those things so that we can all press on towards the high calling of Christ that God has placed on each one of us. Not just the spiritual giants like Paul, but you and me, ordinary average Christians who are seeking to try to live out our faith as best we know how. And Paul is telling us the best way Keep pushing on. Take the next step. Take the next step for you. I invite you to do that today. Let me pray. Lord, thank you that you are good and that you have called us to continue to not be content with where we are in our relationship with you, but to continue to deepen it, to continue to step out in it. Lord, perhaps it is learning to share our faith more learning how to share the love of Christ in ways that are meaningful. Lord, I pray for that. I ask that for all of us. Lord, speak to each of us and put people around us that will help us to press on towards your high heavenly calling. I ask that in your name. Amen. Today at 6 o'clock, we will have our, um, we will have our, our virtual soup supper from 6 to 6.30, so join us for that. The, uh, the contact information will be in the Constant Contact as well as on our website. And in addition, I um, wanted to let you know as we're moving towards Easter and now that uh, Governor Walls has taken off some of the restrictions, we're probably going to put some more chairs in the sanctuary. And one of the things that we've heard is that sometimes it's a little hard for some folks to get up out of the chair or even to just stand on the, on the slanted floor. So we're going we're gonna to try some different things um, to try to help us out in that so that it's a little easier for people to get up and to, uh, to sit down and those kinds of things. So um, if, uh, if you, as you're thinking about maybe thinking about joining us either for Palm Sunday or for Easter and you're wondering about how that's going to work with just chairs, we're going to try to address that a little bit. So hopefully you'll, uh, you'll feel more comfortable coming in and being able to get in and out well. So I hope you have a good day. Take your next step on what it means to grow in Christ for you. Have a great day, folks. God bless. Bye-bye now.